Hey, yo, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot to talk about. As you guys know, the transfer window is moving and it has been a relatively quiet transfer window due to FFP and a lot of teams not really spending the same way they spent last year. For example, the Premier League last year spent over 700 million, sorry, 700, yeah, 760 million pounds was spent on transfers last transfer window, almost a billion pounds. And Chelsea spent like a quarter of it themselves. So crazy transfer window last season, but this season a little bit quieter. But of course, we're going to get into all the latest transfer news. Eddie and Ketia potentially leaving to another football club. Arsenal, uh, one of Arsenal's players not leaving this transfer window has been confirmed by Fabrizio Romano. David Onsen has also spoken about some things also. We need to get into that. Plus, um, we're looking at four maybe st uh, potential strikers and one big name Ballon d'Or winner potentially could be linked to the Arsenal Football Club right now. But before we go any further, this video is sponsored by SofaScore, so let me play the quick video. Big up SofaScore for sponsoring this video today, and they will be sponsoring all of uh, all of the videos on the channel for the for the foreseeable future. So big up SofaScore. You can uh, download the link to their app in the uh, in the description of the video, and of course, their app is the home of all sports. So you can find NFL, NBA, tennis, MMA, whatever you want. It's on that app. And it's amazing. So go check it out. But before we go any further, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And let's get straight into it, ladies and gentlemen. First major topic we need to get into. Let's go check it out. So first thing is Fabrizio Romano reveals key positions Arsenal will be looking to sign in January. And that key position that Fabrizio Romano is speaking about is none other than the defense. Fabrizio Romano basically states that Arsenal Football Club are looking to sign a defender in this uh, January window. He also states that we're not looking to sign any other major positions at this moment in time. So that is that is what Fabrizio Romano came out with in his in his little statement there. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to tell you guys this. Personally, for me, I'm looking at Fabrizio Romano and I'm saying he doesn't know much of what's going on at Arsenal at this moment in time. Even though he is a top tier journalist, I look at him and I say he doesn't know as much as the likes of a David Onstein for example. So David Onstein in his article is speaking about one Arsenal player who's attracting interest that will not be leaving this transfer window. Sorry, one second. So one Arsenal player who will be uh, who will not be leaving this transfer window. That player is none other than Emil Smith-Rowe. Emil Smith-Rowe will not be leaving Arsenal Football Club this transfer window. Of course, he has attracted a lot of interest. And Eddie Nketiah might be another one, but we're going to get into Eddie Nketiah because he still could potentially leave. But he does say that Emil Smith-Rowe will not be going anywhere this January transfer window as he has plans. The clubs do have plans for him. As for Eddie Nketiah, as Eddie Nketiah goes, Fulham have declared their interest in signing the striker Arteta does not want to lose the player in January as Eddie Nketiah is a valuable part of the squad. However, uh, summer is expected to be a different story. So ahead of the summer, we could see a situation where Eddie Nketiah heads off to Fulham. Personally, uh, personally to me, I don't think the club is going to spend big in the in this in this upcoming window. So of course, they're going to hold on to the likes of Eddie Nketiah for now. But the, but the rumor does make sense. Eddie Nketiah has now attracted interest from the likes of Brentford, Crystal Palace, Fulham. We, ca we now have a three-horse race to see who can sign Eddie Nketiah's signature. That only helps Arsenal. And in today's market, let's be honest, Eddie Nketiah should be going for minimum 30 to 40 million, especially when we're seeing all sorts of youngsters who are relatively unproven going for ridiculous price tags like the likes of Rasmus Hoyland, who's only scored seven goals at his previous club before joining Manchester United for such a ridiculous fee. So that's my take on this. Uh, we need to get a decent fee for Eddie Nketiah. 
and the fact that Fulham's come in for him, it's only a positive. We could, uh, and it's another positive that we should be taking away from that. So good news that we can see that some of our players are attracting interest from clubs within the Premier League. That means uh, we might be making some reasonable money on them in the summer. Now, here are some signings that we are linked to as potential replacements for Eddie Nketiah. So under 21 uh, year old striker, former Bayern player, currently playing for Bologna, Netherlands, uh, Netherlands uh, player, uh, Joshua Zachary, uh, Zachary, Key, uh, uh, Zachary, Zachary, Key, Zachary Z. Sorry, how do you pronounce this guy's name? One second. Zerkzy. Zerkzy. So Joshua Zerkzy, who is a wonder kid who came out of uh, Bayern, is now playing in Bologna, where he's done relatively decent in his time in Bologna so far. Let me let me just double check how he's doing in Bologna right now. He has played in a total of 19 games, has seven goals, two assists at striker. He's 22 years old. He's one of those youngsters. Personally, for me, I think 50 million for this guy, he's not coming in to be a starter. He would have to be rotation. We cannot be spending 50 million and thinking that we've sold our striker position. We need finished articles. So this is where I look at Zachary, Josh, uh, Joshua uh, Zerksi, and I look at some of the other potential links that we also have. For example, this guy here, um, Santiago, Santiago Gomez. The thing is, Santiago Gomez is killing it for Farnard right now. He's absolutely smashing it for Farnard. And everyone's saying he's on fire. We should be looking at him. He scored 18 goals in 16 games. He's killing it right now. 22 years old. He's six foot. He's a, he's a tall, good striker that could give us that could give us another plan. But personally, for me, I look at him the same way as I look at Xerxes. I look at Santiago Gomez and Xerxes, and I say to myself, at this moment in time, if we do sign either of those two, they would have to be in addition to an Ivan Tony or Victor Ozyman, not just one of them. You need them plus Ivan Tony and Victor Ozyman, in my opinion. And that would mean Eddie Enketia would be moved on. That would mean Gabriel Jesus would be used as rotation also to the uh, for the wings. And we would not be signing a winger at that point. We would be instead be signing two strikers. But the 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 circumstance in which we we would sign two strikers we would be then maybe falling short in our midfield squad depth. Summer will probably take a hit if we invest heavy in the attack. We might not invest as heavy in the midfield come this summer. And we still need to invest heavy in the midfield as Thomas Partey's contract is running down. And we also know Jorginho will probably have one year left. We would also, of course, have already gotten rid of the likes of um uh, El Neni this January. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens there. But there is also another potential option. Yes, you're looking at him right now. Kareem Benzema. Kareem the Dream Benzema is, yeah, we have been linked to him numerous times. Better late than never, ladies and gentlemen. Arsenal Football Club could finally get the man that we've been talking about since God knows how long. 2012, 2014, 2015, how long ago was it that we were always linked to Kareem Benzema in the summer and we never ended up getting him? Kareem Benzema is now linked to Arsenal. Rumor has it that he is having issues over in Saudi. In Saudi. So reports are that he's missed training with Al-Halal due to the fact that he was stuck in, in the, uh, stuck on vacation with his, uh, with his entourage, unable to get back. Sorry, unable to get back to Saudi Arabia to uh, complete his training. So at this moment in time, rumors are flying around that he could be potentially linked to clubs on loan for six months. And if that's the case, Arsenal should be all over that. Now, some people are going to say Mikel Arteta doesn't deal well with egos. And we know and we know um, Kareem Benzema has had his falling outs with certain managers in the past. For example, the French uh, national team coach. Um, uh, uh, of course, has been one of the people he fell out with in the past. So some people would say it might not be a good idea. Mikel Arteta might not want him to sign him. Personally, for me, I think it would be a no-brainer. 
we need somebody, we need a stopgap, we need somebody to help us. And with his experience in the Champions League, his experience winning league titles, his experience winning major trophies, he's done everything you need to do in football pretty much in the club level. Um, I think if we could get Kareem Benzema, it would be amazing. Will we actually pull the trigger on Kareem Benzema? I don't know. Would you guys be interested in signing Kareem Benzema? Let me know in the comment section what you guys think in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. Um, also, I just wanted to touch on some other topics quickly. Um, we haven't heard any news on this situation here with the center back from, from Sporting since the 9th of January. There's been no major update on that. The update on, on, on Amadou Onana, it's not happening. Apparently, he, he's going to cost around $60 million if we if we're interested in him. And so that's just not affordable at this moment in time. $60 million in the January window where we're struggling to, to put cash together. And, of course, um, we got people like Expressions coming out with troll, uh, troll messages saying, oh, uh, Arsenal shouldn't have gotten rid of Balogun. Let me know, should Arsenal have kept Balogun? Because if you guys don't know, Balogun, as of late, has fallen out with the manager over there uh, and, and has been dropped on successive games. He's played 15 games in Ligue 1. He's, he's gotten four goals, three assists. Yes, uh, that is decent return. But when you think about it, he's pretty much started majority of those games. And he's only recently started to fall out with the manager. So I don't look at Balogun and say he's a heavy miss. I, I would think... At this moment in time, he, if he, he's unproven, relatively unproven still. So to say that we would miss him is kind of ridiculous. But hey, what are you going to do? A lot of people are going to just say some crazy stuff nowadays. Where is where is the rest of the stuff? Oh, by the way, here is Anthony's new car, spinning top. Just so, just so, uh, just so you guys can see that. And then where is this? There was, there was something else that I wanted to show you. Oh, yeah, ridiculous comparisons. But, yeah, that is pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing else really to be talking about. So I personally, I just need to, I just need to know what you guys think we're going to do. How much do you think we're going to spend in January? I don't think we're going to spend that much money. By the way, quick update. Takahiro Tamiyasu has been excluded from the Japanese team today versus Vietnam. Looks like he's being rested for precautionary reasons. So we're going to have to wait and see there. And also, I've been seeing a bunch of stuff about people talking about Lacazette and talking about Balogun and talking about Olivier Giroud. Can we stop it? Can we please stop it? Because this revisionary history is is ridiculous. Every single time we talk about these guys, we talk about it's revisionary history, revisionary history. Can we stop doing this, please? Because in comparison to some of the other major signings that we've made over the last couple of years, Lacazette and Olivier Giroud were underwhelming. They never hit the heights that we thought they would hit. That's just the reality. It's very uh, underwhelming. Yeah, Onana is not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. But even if we did make a signing for Onana, do you guys even think Onana is the answer for our midfield at this moment in time? That's that's another question. And finally, who will we sign? I think most likely we're going to sign a defender, as as reported by numerous sources. So we're going to just have to wait and see what happens there. Um, but yeah, and do you even think there's a possibility Arsenal could get a Kareem Benzema this transfer window? Let me know what you guys think. I'm out of here, ladies and gentlemen.